All right guys, welcome back to the Rosie Rides channel. In behind me, I got a Cannondale Trail 4. It's my buddy's Michaels. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it, go over some of the components and tell you about my experience with it. Cannondale Trail 4, not my bike, but had the opportunity to ride it. And my thoughts on it right off the bat before we get into the video, great entry level bike, great for anybody looking to get into the sport and get started on something that is trail capable and that would allow for great progression in the sport. Beginning with the bike, this one is a 2020 model. So not the newest, not the latest and greatest, but it is very similarly spec to the Cannondale Trail 4 Special Edition. So there's the Cannondale Trail 4 and then there's the Cannondale Trail 4 SE, which comes with a custom paint job and a little bit of a different spec in. So going over his bike, which is similar to the 2021 model, 2022 model, oh my goodness, of the Cannondale Trail 4 SE. It's gonna come with the same tires originally. Right now there's Maxxis Ardents on them, but originally they'll come with a Trail Boss WTB and a Breakout WTB tire, both a little bit of a thicker trail tire. And then suspension is gonna be a Rock Shocks coil suspension on there. So no air suspension, but the air suspension is made up with the drivetrain, which is gonna be a one by drivetrain, Diore, with the 30 tooth in the front, and then a 11 to 42 tooth in the back. And I must say that front chain ring does not feel like a 30, if I'm being honest. It feels a lot more like a 28. There's a lot of climbing that can be done considering there's not that extra gears in the back with the cassette, still feel like you could climb up anything with the gearing. And then on the brakes, hydraulic brakes, a Shimano come original with the 2022 model. But on this bike, we got the Tektro entry level model, hydraulic brakes work just as great. And honestly, I've ridden both the MT400 entry level brakes and the Tektros. And I really like the Tektros. I'm kind of leaning towards the Tektros as far as the brakes and the feeling with them. But overall, great bike. And then we'll look to the regular Cannondale Trail 4 quickly and see the differences between them there. So the regular Cannondale Trail 4 comes with the Suntour XCR remote lockout fork. So that's gonna be an awesome fork to have. Air fork on the front, if that's something that you're looking for. It's gonna have better performance than the coil fork, but this is the trade-off if you want. It's the better fork or better drivetrain. So on the drivetrain with the Trail 4 for the 2021, not the special edition version, it's gonna have a two by Diore system, two by 10 Diore system, and it's gonna have a 36 tooth in the front and a 26 tooth in the back. Personally, personally might be an unpopular opinion, but I love to buy systems. I think they're great. It allows you to keep those top speeds when going downhill, but allows you to climb anything in a high cadence as well. Obviously the one by 12 provides that too, but really with the one by, or two by 10, sorry, uh, late in the race when your legs don't have that same power and you need to get to those lower gears, the 26, tooth ring and then the big 10 in the back really helps then again you're cross training cross chaining too so that's where some difficulties come up but nonetheless really great bike and overall it handled great had some wider tires like i said we didn't have the regular trail boss or uh, breakout wtb tires on it we had the maxis ardents in a 2.4 i think the original tires come with a 2.3 so a little bit wider not crazy but it rode great, super confidence inspiring considering the price point. And I think this is a great entry level bike. You'd obviously be looking for something that's upgradable in an entry level bike, but also capable right out of the box. And this is gonna be in and around $1,500 Canadian. So a bit cheaper for those in the US or Europe, European dollar. So it'll probably be closer to around 1200, 1100 euro USD, depending on where you're looking at the bike from. Back to the drivetrain, 11 by 40 tooth cassette, and then 30 tooth in the front for that front chain ring. And it, like I said, it really didn't feel like a 30 tooth in the front. I felt like I was still able to climb anything despite how long or how steep it may have been. The drivetrain one, despite it being a one by 10, didn't have any hindrance in my climbing ability. Where I really did see the 
1 by 12 having that smaller chain ring in the front affect me was those top speeds on the flats and the downhills where you are able to maintain that pedaling speed wasn't able to cap out at the speed I know my legs are capable of pushing out but it is a trail bike not necessarily meant for racing so those top speeds could be sacrificed for the ability to make those hard and difficult climbs. And like I said, this wasn't my personal bike. This is my friend Michael's and speaking with him once getting it, he's had it for about a month, took it out for about three, four rides before he had his unfortunate injury that's gonna take him out till August. But he said making that switch from a big box store bike over to a trail bike that's more capable was really confidence inspiring and he felt a lot better, not only climbing, descending, bike handling, every category possible. So I'm looking forward to him getting back on the bike as soon as possible. Thanks for watching till the end guys. And if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe with notifications on so you can see more content like this. And if you wanna support Michael, get him back on the bike after his injury, comment GGMG down below in the chat. Wish him well for a speedy recovery so he's back on the bike and back helping out with the Rosie Rides channel. Take care and thanks for your support and growing the sport.